Yo, Autumn is coming through real quick. Hey Forum, Manny back here with another video on the Cascade Sands Fragrance Station and this one is on my top 10 autumn fragrances. Now I don't have much of a prologue here but I do have a lot to get through with these 10 fragrances so we might as well get started right away with the list. Starting at number 10 of course here it is Avignon by Comme des Garçons. Part of the incense series along with other greats like Kyoto and Zagorsk, my favorite here in Avignon is really what it's described as. Incense wise, it flat out smells like an old gothic catholic church. I love incense in the autumn as it just seems like an appropriate thing for me to burn that and it takes me back to a few years ago. Like I easily get the same vibe that I do here that I did when I was actually at some OG churches back in France and Belgium when I was there a few years back. I really had a lot of fun doing that urban exploration. I can't really wait to do that again one day myself. But for now, I'm going to settle with this for some of my most daring occasions. And maybe this is something you'd be into as well if you're into all things incense. Again, it's my number 10, Avignon by Comme des Garçons. All right, let's move on to my number nine fragrance now. Here is Play Intense by Givenchy. Still my favorite rendition of that Michael Jordan legend style coffee to date, but it's also equal parts of standard play DNA. But despite its obvious influences, I do appreciate the blend because I do think it's actually well blended enough. Like it's clearly of designer quality, but when I put it on, I'm like, wow, I really like this. That and it's crazy feedback factor. Believe it or not, this is one of those fragrances that I've received some of my most flattering comments with ever. But feedback and complimented stuff may and will vary with just about every user. You guys should already know that. But if you are looking for an alternative yet safe night out option, definitely check this out in Play Intense. Definitely worthy of its number nine spot here in my top 10 autumn fragrances. But moving on now, here we go with the number eight spot. Here is Five O'Clock Eau Jean Jean by Serge Lutens. Honestly, guys, you smell this stuff and you automatically think of autumn. Gingery tea vibe to a T here. Just a super comforting and at ease fragrance and easily my favorite from the great brand of Serge Lutens. This is also a throwback type of scent for me too because it's reminiscent of the days where I'd fake sick for a September day of high school to play some video games or something like that. And my mom would also make me some ginger tea at home too. Fast forward. 10 years later, I'm still playing video games, I'm still sipping on that ginger tea, but now I have this as well to furthermore get me into that 10 years ago feeling. It's just this and that ginger tea are so reminiscent of each other and I think that's really cool. So if you're into really cozy tea-like scents like Gucci Pour Am Dub by Gucci, or if you just like ginger in general, definitely give this a shot if you haven't yet. Again, it's 5 o'clock Eau Jean Jean by Serge Lutens at number 8. Alright now, moving on, here we go with the number 7 spot. Here's Bergamus Noir by Gallagher Fragrances. Now this stuff is a flanker to the original Bergamust and it also has a bright sharp bergamot opening. But this stuff is called Noir for a reason so you definitely get some darker elements almost ASAP here. For me it's that smoke. Without a doubt a darker take on that aquatic genre, equal parts smoky and citrusy slash marine in an ambroxan kind of way. So for me it's kind of the perfect scent for the seasonal transition into autumn. I personally love the idea of lighter fleeting notes transitioning into into darker ones. Definitely perfect for the transitioning seasons, at least for me. So that's why I really love rocking this stuff lately. Again, it's Bergamus Noir by Gallagher Fragrances at number seven. Alrighty now, moving on to my number six. Here we go with arguably my best blend that I own, period. Here's Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mull. Now, super bold, long-lasting roses in combination with an earthy patchouli are typically super sexy, regardless if a woman or man is wearing it. But then there's Portrait of a Lady level sexy, and to me, it's ball game, like it's a wrap here. In my opinion, Portrait of a Lady is one of the most flattering, dark, and sensual fragrances ever assembled. Whether it's feeling sexy or driven in a formal kind of way, I think it's definitely that and more. But just to note, stereotypically speaking, I do think that this stuff is really feminine. That, and I can't emphasize it enough, it is a really bold fragrance. Definitely not for the faint of heart, but if I ever want to make a really big statement formally, this is definitely what I am reaching for. So if you didn't know what it is, you do know now, it is Portrait of Lady by Frederick Mall at number six. Now crossing the halfway point, here we go with my number five autumn fragrance. Here's Ombre Nargolet by Hermes. It's funny because when Jean-Claude Elena made this fragrance for Hermes, I could definitely see what he was trying to do here as far as making a scent that was reminiscent of smoke from Middle Eastern Nargolets or hookahs. Like I get a whiff of this stuff and it's an intoxicating gourmand honey bomb. So I definitely get that smoky gourmand nature out of it, but your friends who aren't maybe as big a fragrance head as you are, they'll just think that it's really nice. 
Yes, Ombre Nargalet is just an undeniably awesome, sweet, spicy, and somewhat intoxicating gourmand that I think is hard to hate for fragrance heads and casuals alike. Not unless you outright hate sweet or gourmand fragrances, and if that is you, then I am sorry. But yeah, if I ever want to be the life of the party on a night out, I'm definitely almost always rocking this. You know what it is now, one of the contemporary gourmand trendsetters today, Ombre Nargalet by Hermes. All right, guys, moving on to number four. I'm pretty sure Bay is going to kill me here. It's Gypsy Water by Byredo. Now, if you've been following this channel for a minute, you know how I feel about G Water. Stage-wise, it's juicy in a citrusy way, then a little bit coniferous for me, but creamy and sweet towards the end. Super safe, yet super unique, and a scent that just speaks to me overall. Also, G Water is definitely one of those scents that's perfect for the transition from summer to autumn too, because it has some of those juicy elements into those coniferous and sweeter notes. So if I had to pick any transition scent from summer into autumn, it's definitely this one. And if it wasn't for me rocking it so much earlier this year, maybe I'd rank this higher. I'm just not as enthused to wear it lately, but who knows that might change with as we get into the actual autumn. But you guys already know, it's still Bay, it's still G Water, you guys know what it is. My number four autumn fragrance. Now we're winding down now and here we are with my number three on fragrance this year. It's Terre d'Hermes by Hermes. So we got another Hermes here and this one is the one that I'll reach for if I have no idea what to wear for whatever occasion I'm doing. I'll just put on Terre d'Hermes, it's that simple. Terre's dirty orange vetiver vibe that somehow comes off as earthy and clean is just plain versatile, like there's no other way to put it. Business casual or casual, I just can't go wrong with this stuff. It just feels like I'm ready for whatever's ahead of me, and that's a feeling that is hard to replicate for me elsewhere. Now there's other fragrances that kind of follow this kind of formula, but for me, for autumn, I think Terre d'Hermes is the way to go. I think its earthiness is just what puts it over the top and makes it really feel really autumnal. So that's why the Swiss Army Knife of Ascent is on this list, again as high as number three. Earthy vetiverse for the win. But winding down now, moving on to my number two. Here's Like This by Etat Libre Durange. Now with ginger, immortel, and a pumpkin spice latte vibe, this stuff is definitely a favorite of mine during this time of year. And believe it or not, I really don't even do the pumpkin gimmick elsewhere. I'm sorry my white people friends like the taste of pumpkin spice lattes or pumpkin pie. It's just I ate to me. I don't even do pumpkins outside of my house like some of y'all do, but real talk, if I ever feel like doing it, trust me, it's because of this stuff right here. Simply put, like this is cozy blend just makes me feel like doing autumnal things. Again, even when I initially didn't like doing any of that stuff. But yeah, if you're looking for an unconventional autumn fragrance yourself, definitely give this a shot yet if you haven't yet. It's definitely my premier chilling at home scent for now. That's why it's my number two autumn fragrance this year, like this by Etat Libre d'Orange. But now moving on to my head honcho, my number one autumn fragrance of the year. Here it is. Bois d'Argent by Christian Dior. Guys, wood money is in the building. You smell this and you just feel like doing opulent stuff. Scent wise, it is kind of like that Dior on precursor of an iris DNA. Still super powdery, but trust me, it's not lipsticky whatsoever, which you might appreciate too. But here you have a near equal emphasis on incense, which comes off as woody here in like a resinous kind of way. Just overall a super elegant and sophisticated offering by Nick Minardo for Christian Dior, and I just can't get enough of this lately. I also think that it has more versatility than some people will lead it on to have. Like sure this leans formal, but then there's this kind of formal, and then there's portrait of lady kind of formal, and I definitely don't think I can get away with using this casually. But if I have at least a nice pair of slacks on and a nice button up shirt and maybe some nice sneakers, I definitely feel like I can be fancy with this stuff right here. I'm honestly feeling fancy lately, so that's why I'm really excited to wear this by Kristen Dior. Again, you already know what it is, it's my number one. Bois d'Argent. So there it is guys, we do have a winner here in Bois d'Argent by Christian Dior. But it's at that time of the video where I'd like for you guys to tell me in the comment section below, what are your winners from my list? That and what are your winners this fall? If you have any suggestions for me to check out, please tell me, I would love to know really. That and if you have any complimentary or any constructive feedback, I'd really appreciate that too. And yeah, I think that about does it for me. So hopefully I do see you next time. And until then, take care guys, peace out, bye. Where are your fragrances?